We are making homemade plant-based pizzas from scratch that are 100 times better than delivery. So I was strolling down Walmart's freezer aisle and I was looking at all the pizza that was there and I was like, man, there are so many, so much variety of frozen pizzas and I really got the taste for pizza today. I did go to the like vegan section, like the vegan pizza section. There are a few options there, not very many, but obviously it's it's vegan. There's not that many options for plant-based pizza. So I decided we're just gonna go make it at home ourselves. So here we are, we're in the high pass kitchen. Let's make some homemade pizza. First, we're gonna make sure we have all of our ingredients. So we know that we have most of our ingredients at home. We are going out into the garden and we're gonna pick some fresh oregano for our pizza as well. We don't have any basil, but that's okay. We're just gonna stick to oregano. To start off, we of course need to make the dough for the pizza. Now, I'm gonna experiment with our bread dough recipe or our method of making bread for this recipe, just because it seems like that recipe can really make everything from naan to a loaf of bread to cinnamon rolls it can make all things so i figure we're going to give it a try and we're going to just make that into a pizza crust as well today so i'm just going to we're going to start with very very simple ingredients we've got some we're going to get some water we've got some um, active dry yeast we have some organic flour typically when you're making pizza we would recommend you using bread flour because of that extra gluten you want that nice and chewy chewy crispy crust type of dough um, but today we just have regular all-purpose flour which you can just get at any grocery store we're going to make it nice and accessible we do also like to grind our own wheat we like to use spelt uh, but today we're just going to use an, an organic all-purpose flour and we need some salt and some oil as well normally when we make our bread dough i like to start with the liquid ingredients and then the uh, dry ingredients but today i'm we're gonna experiment like what would make like would it really make a difference if we just started with dry the dry ingredients first i don't know we like to experiment around here we'll experiment for you so you don't have to so i'm gonna add some flour we're not gonna be measuring here just because we um we like to cook this way but i will have of course the link to our like how to make our bread recipe in the description so you can check it out and you're going to use the exact if you want to follow a recipe um, you can definitely follow the recipe on that video um, we like to kind of freehand things around here so that's how i'm going to make our pizza today hi there okay go get something to um stand on so you can help mix this first off we're going to add our flour into our bowl like i said i'm not really measuring this i'm just going to add uh, what I think is enough flour for our large family. We're gonna add about two teaspoons or so of salt. I would recommend adding a little bit more of salt just because we want it to be more savory. But again, I will have the uh, full recipe if you are looking to make this dough as well. As far as the active dry yeast, we're going to sprinkle a little bit onto the surface of our flour. Normally when I make bread, I like to use the yeast and water and I just kind of mix the yeast into the water, um, but we're just going to sprinkle it on top here, just as an experiment. Also, in a regular bread recipe, you are to use some warm water just to make sure that you are activating the yeast. However, if you know that your active dry yeast is, in fact, active, you can just use room temperature water. You can just put the dough in a very nice warm place for it to prove and it'll still activate just the same. As you can see, when we are slowly mixing this dough, um, you can see a lot of water still. So this is when I know I need a lot more flour in here. So we're gonna add a little bit, we're gonna stir it a little bit more. You can still see a lot of wetness, so we're gonna continue to add flour. Typically a pizza dough is um, pretty high in hydration. So about, I would say like 60, 65, 68 percent or so. So we're going to try to mimic that. It's going to be a little bit of um, kneading that we need to do, but it should turn out really, really good. So let's, I'm just adding just enough flour just to form sort of a dough. And then we will knead the rest. It looks pretty wet, so I'm just going to add some more. I'm going to continue to do it until I don't see that it's a puddle of water everywhere. If you have a stand mixer, this is a good time to use it 
just bust it out because it's a there's going to be some kneading involved. I do really like the idea of doing things by hand um, without that mixer just because everything is just more rustic and homemade and I really really love that we are hand making everything and the kids learn the feeling and the touch and how the dough is supposed to feel like. As you can see, this is how our dough is looking like. It's a little bit shaggy and it's still wet. It's still very tacky. I'm going to add some flour onto our surface here. I'm just going to put our dough ball onto the table and start kneading it by hand. I made sure to add plenty of flour because this dough was definitely very, very tacky and sticky still. And I was trying my best to just roll it on itself and just push it with the palm of my hand. Of course, the kids wanted to get involved with the kneading as well, so of course, I let them kind of just touch and feel and learn how to knead this dough. I decided it was very, very sticky. I wanted to add a little bit of oil here. I didn't want to add too much flour, so I'm just kneading some of that olive oil in here. You can see that it's definitely helped with the dough a lot when I added that oil. I was supposed to add oil into the dough, but I completely forgot, but that's okay. Now I found the easiest way to knead this is just to pick it up, let the dough fall on itself, and then pick it up again on the 90 degree angle, and then just repeat that same process as you can see here. I did this for about five minutes or so, maybe not even. I'm going to add it into a well-oiled bowl, add a little bit of oil on the top. Isaiah's helping me gently, carefully add some oil. And we are just going to make sure that this dough ball is tossed in that oil so it doesn't stick to the bowl. We are going to let this sit for a little bit. It has to prove, uh, kind of activate that yeast so it can produce a nice bubbly crust. I am doing the window pane test at the moment. The flour has not completely been hydrated yet, so we're gonna let this sit for a little bit. I did do a couple more tosses of the dough ball just to make sure that it's nice and uh, incorporated and it is nice and smooth. This was actually one of the funnest steps of pizza making. I really loved this part. I don't know why, I just, it was so fun to play with this dough. Alrighty, you can see this dough ball is nice and smooth. It should be still a little bit tacky, but not sticking to your fingers. We're going to cover it and put it in a uh, oven that is turned off, but with the light on. Now we're gonna clean up a little bit and we're gonna get ready to prepare all of our pizza toppings. Mercy is over here helping me chop some bell peppers. We're gonna do a just very simple sort of veggie uh, pizza. And these are the ingredients that we had in our fridge anyway. So we have some red bell peppers. You can use some green, orange, yellow, whatever that you have. Even better if you grew your own. I also went to the store to pick up some olives for this pizza as well. You can use some artichokes, uh, just you name it, you can put it on your pizza. Some of you may know we are also growing our own gourmet mushrooms. So we've got some blues here that needed to be used. We've also got some beautiful pinks that we need to be that need to be used as well. You definitely need to cook mushrooms quite long. So I am just pre-cooking these mushrooms. We're going to put them on a baking sheet. I just kind of tore the petals off um, a little bit here. We're gonna drizzle it with some hemp oil. Uh, we have some salt going on, just making it very, very simple. We're gonna toss it and we are gonna just roast this up at, in a hot oven at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15, 20 minutes or so. Here is a lineup of what we chose for our pizza toppings. So we've got some lovely baby spinach here just for some added greens. For the sauce, we are using some organic crushed tomatoes. We're gonna keep it very, very simple. If you have like a can of just regular tomatoes, you can always just blitz it with a hand blitzer as well. We are using some onion powder. You can have some garlic powder. We've got some sliced Kalamata olives, some jalapenos. We have, this is the cheese that we chose to follow your heart mozzarella cheese. Um, it is soy free, as you can see the ingredients, so that's why we picked it. And then a plate full of beautiful ingredients like red bell peppers, cherry tomatoes, some red onions and our freshly picked oregano. 
To make the sauce, we're just gonna make it very simple. We're gonna keep it in the can, why dirty a dish? We added some salt, we added some onion powder. You can add some Italian seasoning if you have. We don't have, um, we've got, uh, you can add the oregano in here as well, and some garlic would be really good in here. Maybe add a touch of olive oil or any kind of oil that you have and stir it up. And then the pizza sauce is ready. checking on that pizza dough really quick this is what it looks like Ooh, it looks so so beautiful our mushrooms are also ready uh, i may have roasted it a little bit too high of a temperature but that's okay it is nice and crispy like kind of like bacon i am doing a quick check of the dough and just to see if it does pass that window pane test and so this is how your dough should really look like. You can see that the flour has absorbed all of the water and you can see that you could see through your dough when you pull it up this way. It's nice and elasticy. For our first pizza, I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of difficult. I didn't know if I needed to just roll the pizza out first and try to spread it out. Uh, as you can see, the first one was a total fail. It stuck on my parchment paper. Do not spread it onto the <laughs> parchment paper like mine. Okay, second time's a charm. I'm going to pull up a little dough ball of dough here. We are going to put it on a well-floured surface, just my chopping board. Make sure we are tossing this pizza dough into my flour as well before I try to spread it out or try to do any stretching. Once the dough is nice and floured and it's not sticking anywhere, I'm going to try to spread it out as much as possible with my fingertips. This is going to be our tester pizza. We're going to see how it turns out. So we just transfer this onto a parchment lined baking sheet and then we're just going to proceed with all of the toppings. I have a layer of tomato sauce or the crushed tomatoes down. The kids topped it with the cheese and whatever toppings they wanted. Let's talk oven temperature. You can either, one, if you have a pizza setting, this would be the perfect time to use a pizza setting, or just set it up as hot as you can. So about 500, mine went to 525, so that's what I used. We're gonna put that in for about 10 minutes, this first tester pizza, and we are going to work on the rest of the other pizzas. I found the best way to stretch this dough ball is just to kind of go from the center and slowly turn it and stretch it just like how I'm doing. You definitely want to be gentle and you don't want to rip any holes in them. Now the thinner you like it, you need to just kind of make sure you are stretching it as much as it could go. You can leave a little bit of a crusty side if you want to and I'm also just spreading this uh, to make it a little bit bigger. This is also a good time to use a pizza stone if you have. You wanna make sure that you are preheating that pizza stone in your very hot oven before you lay on your crust. I'm adding a very thin layer of the tomato sauce. I don't want it to, to be too saucy. And then on goes our cheese. You can see I barely left sort of a crust on the side uh, because I don't really want a thick crust. I don't really like a thick crust. So I'm going to spread it out as much as possible. It's our pizza. I could do whatever I want. Likewise here, we are adding all the toppings that we want here. So we've got some onions, peppers, actually whatever that we had out, we're going to top every single pizza with. Put that in a hot oven and we are going to set the timer for 10 minutes. As you can see, I had lots of fun with my dough, so um, I probably shouldn't have worn a black shirt. Ooh wee, look at that. First pizza came out as nice and crusty. For this pizza, we did use the pizza setting on our oven. It actually acts as a convection oven. You can hear the air go around, so it really helps the pizza kind of cook all the way through. I drizzled the top of our pizza with a little bit of olive oil. We're going to slice it up and it's time for taste testing. Everyone was so excited. They couldn't even wait for us to cut this pizza. Um, but yeah, everyone being excited is probably an understatement. Including myself, I was very, very excited for this pizza. It looked delicious. When we took a bite of this pizza, it was perfection. The crust was nice and thin. The crust itself tasted delicious. You wanna make sure you add perfect amount of salt in here. The toppings were delicious. Ah, everything was 
so so good and i'm seriously telling you the truth you may know if it's not very good we are definitely going to let you know while the kids were enjoying their first pizza, I'm gonna work on the next one. So the same way for the other dough ball, I'm going to stretch it from the middle of the dough, and then we're gonna stretch it out as much as possible, as thinly as possible, without breaking the dough. I like to rotate that pizza crust like that and make sure all of the uh, sides are nice and thin. The second pizza came out, voila, oh, this is gorgeous. This pizza was cooked in an oven set at 525 Fahrenheit, and it worked beautifully. Here go the kids rushing to get their next piece of pizza. And this whole afternoon was, like I said, just a beautiful pizza party. We just continued to make pizza. The kids continued to help me do the toppings. We uh, ate pizza, we put the next one in. It was really, really fun. This was the most perfect pizza that we made of the day. Look at how gorgeous the crust looks, the sauce, the melty cheese, everything was perfect. As you can see, it actually turned out really nice and thin. You could see how thin it is if I just folded it like this. There was plenty of toppings. I mean, we could literally put as much toppings as we wanted. We really, really hope that you decide to make this yourself if you are at home. Don't call for a delivery pizza don't get that frozen pizza just make it at home it really did not take long and it is the probably gonna be your best pizza you've ever had because you made it and you know exactly what you like we've probably eaten about four or five pizzas what do you think we ate quite a bit of pizza we still got three more to go it's a pizza party today and it's been really really fun all the pizzas have been looking all sorts of different but rustic uh, and tastes absolutely delicious. And uh, we really hope that you give this a try. Make pizza at home, it's a lot better, it's so fresh. It's just so good. Alrighty guys, I hope that you enjoyed spending time with us today in the kitchen. Subscribe if you're new and we'll see you on the next video. Bye everybody. Bye everybody.